Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. I am married to the president's oldest son, and so I learned about it when they came and became the president's family here. That was before um, Jacob, my husband, and I were married. And so that's how I learned about this place. And um, it just kind of started popping up everywhere after that. So I am the library director here on campus. I was invited to come because they were having issues finding anyone who already had a library degree. And I have worked previously in both uh, public and private libraries. And so they asked me to come finish up my bachelor's and then move on and get a master's, becoming the credentialed librarian that they needed for the accreditation. They just needed someone to be there with the plan in place in order to reach that goal. And so that is what I kind of do here. I am the library director and as well as a student. And I work with all the students here on campus from the kindergartners all the way up to the um, college seniors. And so it's a lot of fun. I do story time. I help students with research. I teach information literacy. Um, and I substitute for the academy sometimes. Um, it's really wonderful and I really enjoy it. So like resources would be, I would have um, like databases and I can train people in that, but we do have a specific media department that is kind, kind of works with IT and PR a bit. So like I would have like videos and audio and that type of stuff for students to use, but the social media aspect is more of a different department. Well, the mission really is, um, as our mission statement says, to change the world with the unchanging word. And that's, it's very interesting to me because the world does change so incredibly much, but we do have one thing that doesn't, and that's God, and he has given us his word that we base things off of. But the idea is that while the world is changing, we want to guide it to be changing in the correct direction. So we're changing the world with the unchanging word. So the idea is to help students really find their, their focus, their ministry, to grow in that area so that way they can then go out and do the same for other people, sending more students in, filling pulpits, um, going to other countries, and even maybe even sending students from there and our online presence is growing steadily and so our outreach is more and more and we really really want to touch lives and to honestly change the world. I like to ask students, I, I've actually just begun asking students this, what is your passion? What would you spend time and maybe money doing? How do you want to change the world? And from a fifth grader I've gotten, I want to be a vet or they want to be work in an animal shelter, they want to rescue animals. And that's, that's a really sweet answer for a kid. And, but it can do a lot of good, and I mean, animals are part of God's creation, and it can, they can touch a lot of people that way. And I even got from an intercultural studies student that they want to change the world with poetry. And I thought that was so interesting. So as the library director, I want to find what passions our students have and help guide those passions toward a ministry for the Lord. I don't want that student to abandon his love for poetry just because he's in intercultural studies. Uh, if he's going to be a missionary, he can still use his poetry for a great ministry. And so that's really what I want to help students do. And I think that's what everyone on campus wants to is help them find their passions for the Lord. So one of the things that Brother Buckler likes to say is that we're not just training students for ministry, we're training students in ministry. So you'll find lots of our students are already involved in different areas of ministry from working in the inner city to doing child evangelism to um, preaching and even doing revivals and stuff. We have students that have held full on revivals and our music majors already play and sing all over the place. And so we're already trying to help them reach out and touch the world. Um, 
while they're here, but we're training them to be able to do so even when they're on their own. So we're kind of facilitating that, that baby step, that inner media area where they're not under their parents anymore. Their parents were the ones doing the ministry for the most part, but now they're the ones doing the ministry, but we're still kind of over them, helping them, guiding them. So that way when they finally leave, they can do all of that on their own. Our outreach um, is a lot through the students that we will be sending out, but you'll also find that most of the staff and faculty here also preach, teach, and do all kinds of stuff throughout our churches in the area and hold revivals and they sing and all kinds of stuff. So in about every way that we can, we're trying to reach out and touch the world. So discipleship, I find, is like helping students, people who are already Christians, to grow in the Lord and to really find their ministry. That's a big part of what we do here. We're helping students really discover what the Lord wants them to do and what ministry. So we have a mentorship program that we um, try to focus on where the mentors meet with the students at least once a month, um, take the students out to eat, talk to them, try to guide them in that process. And um, it really has helped students throughout the years and I've learned some good things about some of the people I've tried to mentor. It's kind of hard when I'm the same age as a lot of them, but there are a lot of people here who are older Christians and that the students really go to and trust for um, advice. And I think that's a big part of discipleship. As we are teaching those students how they can grow, we are then being the example for them to then go on and disciple other people. All right, so the college and the academy are both interconnected and separate entities. So the college is very, very much so ministry-based. We have students going inter into intercultural studies, music ministry, elementary ed education, and like pastoral youth ministry, that type thing. So these students are coming in, for the most part, with a focus on serving the Lord, growing and becoming people that the Lord can use um, in every way that he wants. Um, the academy is a little less ministry focused because we get a lot of people from just the community bringing their kids in for a good private education. Uh, so we also over there, it's mostly focused on like your reading, math, um, just those types of things. And but we do try to snatch those older students especially and of course we do have the big ministry focus from the teachers perspective with the teachers teaching Bible classes and all these different things doing chapels and stuff like that but we do for 11th and 12th grade we requ require them to do dual credit so they have to come over and they have to take I think two college courses each semester that counts for both high school and college credit so even if we don't get those kids to come to college eventually they are still getting some of those Bible courses even while they're in the academy. So we're having that effect over there. So we're always hoping that those students will just transition into college, but that's not always how it works. There's a good relationship between the two. The college students like the younger kids. They hang out. They, they'll play with each other. They'll play basketball together. Um, but they are very separate entities, different teachers, different environment, that type of thing. As the library director, I have the opportunity to interact with both sides of the equation. And honestly, the academy is a lot easier. The lower academy is a lot easier to get into the library because I think a little bit more like them. I can have the toys, the books, the games, that type of thing that they want in the library. But for the, co for the high school students especially, and for the college students, if they're not required to come in, they tend not to because they're a lot more technology minded and we do have online databases and sometimes that keeps students from coming into the library but it's okay we're getting there and I'm working on it <laughs> alright so obviously one of the biggest ways is prayer we always need prayer but we also have a lot of projects going on right now outside the school this building is being painted <laughs> Um, because our, our campus is really old and so there have been lots of buildings with lots of different colors and things and we have people who come on and they don't know what buildings are part of campus and which ones aren't. So they're trying to put some more continuity 
onto our buildings by painting them all the same color and doing the same color scheme. So not only are we doing that, but we've been doing a huge IT upgrade. We are building a whole new cafeteria. We are just upgrading pretty much everywhere we can. And so money is a big part of that, but also if anyone just wants to contact the school and um, even provide some of the technology or some of the services that the school would need, especially, I don't know, carpenters and painters and uh, drywallers and all that stuff, electricians, um, we can use volunteers because that'll save us a lot of money. And so that's a great way to help out the school. Also, you can really help out the school by supporting a student and by donating money even specifically for a student's bill. That really helps our, our students. We try to keep tuition low, but we still have students that struggle. People will pay a little bit of their school bill for them. That's awesome. That's really, really good. And um, yeah, scholarships are important. So why do you do what you do? What gets you up in the morning? Why are you, why are you here? Well, as I said, I like to ask people what their passion is and I want to be able to support them with that and in that area. Whether it's getting books about animal shelters or helping someone learn how to do better poetry or helping them just learn how to research something so that way when they're a preacher later on they're not feeding their congregation false information. Um, I really love stories and I think that stories are such a huge part of what makes our world beautiful and I love to do my best to instill that love of stories whether they're fiction, nonfiction, real life, fantasy, any story I think they can really spur people on and encourage them help them grow closer to the Lord. I have grown some of the closest I've grown to the Lord has been through fictional books and just thanking the Lord for people who would write something like that. That helps me imagine and move toward a better relationship with my Savior. I would say that this school has so much potential and there are so many things happening. There's such passion within our halls, within our teachers, that anyone who comes here can definitely find people who love them and care about them. And I think that's really important. And I think people really need that, especially these days. I think people have always needed it. But there are really people who care and love about everyone here. We really do try to be ministry-minded and to let the Lord love people through us. And so everyone's loved. <laughs>